welcome to Gold Coast Light Rail Science Tram, where we travel Queensland's first light rail system and discover the exciting science and engineering challenges that the project team have encountered to bring the system to life. Living on Earth means we are dependent on the environment for our survival. It's the same for every creature on the planet. There are a range of biotic and non-biotic factors found in the environment that we all need to live, like air, water and nutrients. But what happens when humans need to build something that could impact on the environment? Eloise has more on this story. Thanks Libby. I'm here at the construction site of the Narang River Light Rail Bridge and the Pedestrian and Cycle Bridge with McConnell our Senior Project Engineer Earl. On the Gold Coast we have a rich environment with complex inland, coastal and marine ecosystems. The Gold Coast Light Rail Corridor runs through these ecosystems. Earl, what do you do to make sure you don't damage these ecosystems? Part of our responsibility in constructing the light rail is to predict the kinds of impacts our construction activities could possibly have before we begin, and do the best we can to keep the environment constant for the habitat living on corridor. Because of the fragility of the local ecosystems, we look at our plans showing where the trams need to go, think about the types of construction activity that will happen there, and then about the associated risks. We then develop detailed plans to ensure we are taking every measure possible to prevent environmental accidents and minimise our impact on the surrounding ecosystem. When we first started looking at building the pedestrian cycle bridge over the Narang River, we had to move some of the Gold Coast's most famous residents, the Broadwater Osprey. This pair of Australian eastern osprey are also known by their scientific name Pandian cystatus haliotis. These birds are often found in and around mangroves, rivers and estuaries, inshore seas and coastal islands. Osprey nest in elevated positions with good views all around, but especially good views of water which is where they hunt for fish. An osprey pair usually lay a clutch of three eggs in winter, with a single attempt per season. The incubation period is about 38 days, uh, the nestling period 9 to 11 weeks, and the post-fledging dependence period lasts 2 to 3 months. It was important to consider these factors in moving the Ospro, so sourcing an appropriate location to keep their environment constant and cater for their requirements was very crucial. Also, we have to consider the biotic and non-biotic factors in the area, including the sun, water, air, temperature and soil. Yeah, because even one small change to the surrounding environment could have drastic impacts on the habitat. Exactly, it could have a ripple effect. What else can you tell us about the osprey Earl? Well did you know that the osprey can spot fish from 40 metres above water? Their nests are mainly made of large sticks collected from nearby trees. We found out that they use the nest to lay their eggs and to then care for their young chicks until they are grown up and ready to look after themselves. We also found out that it is best to move the birds earlier in the year so as to not upset them during their breeding season. More than 40 Gold Coast Light Rail personnel, including a fauna spotter catcher, were involved in moving the osprey's nesting pole to its new position in Broadwater Park just 50 metres away. The osprey successfully returned to their nest and are monitored by an environment team to make sure they are healthy and happy. How are they going since their move? After we moved the nest, the ospreys were very happy with the new location. But just like humans, once a young chick has grown up, it is expected to leave the parent's nest and build its own nest. Unfortunately, one of the young chicks from 2011 returned home. The parents weren't too happy and to encourage the young chick to leave and build its own nest, the parents destroyed their nest by pushing all of the sticks off the platform. The parents have only just returned and we are hoping they will soon rebuild their nest. What a massive effort to protect the osprey. What are some other things you do to protect this ecosystem? Well to build the bridge we have a piling barge positioned in the river which means we need to be prepared for spills or runoff, which could be harmful to the environment as well as the local wildlife. On top of our usual safety measures, we have a plan in place in the unlikely event that a spill or runoff occurs. If there is a spill, we deploy silt curtains. The silt curtains are used to contain oils and other chemicals that float on the surface of the water to prevent them from spreading and to collect them in an area where they can be dealt with quickly. That sounds very important. It is very important to be sure that we can deal with environmental risks if they occur. Predicting, planning and testing are what keeps us on track to protect the environment and the species that depend on it for survival. Thanks a lot Al. Back to you Libby. Until the next time we travel the Gold Coast Light Rail Science Tram, keep loving learning. <laughs>